Hey, welcome back to Core Card this week, number 18. Can you believe it's been 18 weeks since we started doing these shows? Thank you everybody who's watching. Our viewership on the shows are going up week after week after week. We're seeing solid growth. Thank you, I appreciate your support. And we're only getting started, just kind of getting, I think, a feel for how we want to do these shows and how you like to see them, so hang tight. Um, but hey, if you're new here, this is the show where I talk about what I think are the biggest stories of core cutting going forward from the past week. So this is my personal opinion on why I think these stories are most influential to the future of core cutting and what I think about them in general. So we're gonna dive into that here. We got a jam-packed week. Thank you for your support though. Hey, do you have a thought about these stories? Do you have a story you think I should include it this week? Leave me a comment down in the show notes. Um, also, these are kind of my opinions on them. If you want to read more about each story, I have a link in the show notes down below where you can find full details of each story if you want to learn more. So let's kind of dive in here. First of all, the first story of the day, it's not one I really wanted to talk about. I just wanted to make sure you didn't miss this deal. Uh, DirecTV Now is currently um, coming, or I should say their Apple TV deal is coming to an end. Right now, if you prepay for three months of DirecTV Now, you get a 4K Apple TV. This is a great deal because typically the Apple TV 4K is $170. Right now you can get for 105 plus three months of DirecTV Now. It really is probably the best deal out there for a Apple TV at the moment. So I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Um, when I'm recording this, it's a good for about a week longer. So end of next week, end of March 2018, this deal will come to an end. Check the link in the show notes for more details. So click on that. But let's keep going. Let's check out more here. Now, right off the bat, one of the things that really stood out to me this week was a report from DL2, however you say that research firm's name, basically says that 55% of all U.S. homes in the United States subscribe to a streaming service. I think that's low, but hey, I'm sure they want to be um, cautious that they don't overstate this, but the short in the stick here is the vast majority of homes pay for a streaming service. And that lines up very uh, well with what TiVo recently announced. That says the majority of cable PTV subscribers, almost 80%, also subscribe to Netflix or some other service like Amazon and Hulu. Primarily though, Netflix is the number one. And it goes with something I've been saying for a while now, that cable TV is no longer um, able of offering you all the content you want. You wanna watch uh, The Handmaid Tale, you wanna watch Orange is the New Black, you wanna watch Stranger Things, the list goes on and on. You can't get that on a streaming service. Uh, Amazon's launching a Michigan football uh, docu-series, I guess we'll call that. Um, and next month, and I'm unbelievably excited. I pay for Prime, primarily for shipping. I had Prime before I became a cord cutter. I had Netflix before I became a cord cutter. Um, but hey, I'm definitely gonna be watching that show. Even if I had cable, I would go pay for for Amazon, even if I didn't want shipping, because I want that Michigan football show. Uh, my wife, Stranger Things, even if we had cable, you better believe we have Netflix. And that goes into, once again, my argument about how Cable is not cheaper. Everybody says, well, if you had cable, you would save money versus core cutting. We all know that's a lie. We all know that you have to really try to stretch the numbers to try to um, argue that cable is cheaper. You have to ignore the device fees. You have to accept that idea that those promo fees would always be there. You have to uh, be crazily over aggressive and subscribing to the things with streaming. Um, but even if you did, even if you went back to cable, most people would still continue to subscribe to one or more streaming service. Amazon, probably for the shipping for most people. Netflix, probably for Stranger Things, Orange is the New Black, Last Chance You, love that show. Um, the list goes on and on for that. So this, I think, is one more nail in the fact that cable is the past, core cutting is the future. It's gonna take some time to get there, but we're slowly moving in that direction. Um, so check this out, have full details. You wanna read all the details about the prediction of the um, or about the numbers of subscribers in the United States who subscribe to a streaming service. Link in the show notes. Um, next up is AT&T and um, DirecTV Now are merging the logins. This came to light a little over a week ago when I started hearing readers complain of not being able to access DirecTV Now. They would get an error that would um, notify them that the ID collision is what it was called. Notify them they can't log in, there's an ID collision. Um, after talking back and forth with AT&T Tech Support, it's basically come down to this. 
AT&T is taking the DirecTV AT&T logins and DirecTV Now and merge them into one. If you have a, an email the same on both, it can cause issues. Some people have said their NFL Sunday ticket has also done that um, and caused issues there too, uh, but that seems to be uh, less prevalent than people who have an AT&T account and a DirecTV Now account with the same um, email address. And this comes because AT&T are taking their um, all their DirecTV, all their AT&T accounts and merging them with the DirecTV Now. Lines up well with the early DirecTV Now beta where you had head of an AT&T account. AT&T has said that they intend to make the DirecTV Now app and the DirecTV app the same. And recently the DirecTV launched a beta app for streaming that is extremely similar to the DirecTV Now app. Um, so it really it makes sense for DirecTV. You have one app now to maintain this of multiple different apps. Um, but in the short term, this could be uh, painful because we're finding glitches like the fact that you, if you have the same app or account details on both AT&T and DirecTV now, they're not merging very well. Uh, AT&T says they're working on this, but it is one more sign that we're getting closer and closer to DirecTV Now's new app from launching with this merger happening. Um, some billing systems have been being updated to include information about the new DVR, et cetera, the other features that are available with the new app. Um, I don't think that the app's gonna launch tomorrow, but I do think that DirecTV Now um, is getting closer to launching. Now, one thing that makes you think it's not definitely not happening tomorrow is they went on DirecTV directtvnow.com and pull details about the DVR. Yeah, there's variants. So AT&T makes all these variants of their website. Like they had one about South by Southwest. It was like directtvnow.com slash South by Southwest and some other stuff that when you went to that link, it still shows the detail. But the directtvnow.com this week, they went and pulled the DVR details. That tells me maybe they put them up a little too early. Uh, probably that they're just not quite ready there. It's probably at least a couple more weeks. Everything that we're seeing does say it we're close, probably within a month or two max, I'm speculating. By the end of spring 2018, I'd be shocked if the new app and DVR is not launched like they say it will. But it's probably not happening tomorrow. Could happen late next week, could happen the week after. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I do think it's very close. I just don't think DirecTV now is happening. The, new, the DVR and the new app will launch this weekend, for example. So keep an eye on that. It's good to see the DirecTVs continue to make they move in the direction of DirecTV Now's DVR and app and all that. I really think it's nice. I think it will really help them become a more competitive option for me, people who they currently are not a competitive option for. All right, last story, kind of a short week in big news, a lot of smaller news this week. Um, like I said, if you have an idea what you think I should add in, let me know. The Weather Channel sold, and I'll, add, I'll actually add this one. The Weather Channel sold to new owners. Um, and it was actually fairly, um, not a company many people expected to buy it, um, purchased it. So, And it sold for a lot less than it did 10 years ago. Big shock, not really. Um, but the, the truth is, I believe it sold for a lot less. Somebody's gonna correct me, maybe say I'm wrong, but count me on that. Um, it kind of shows that you know a lot of people that you thought would be bidding on it weren't, um, or, this, or at least weren't offering what um, NBC Universal wanted for it. So check that out, I'll put that link down there. The sale of the Weather Channel from NBC Universal should be something to keep an eye on. The fact that they're willing to sell the Weather Channel right now a kind of tells you that they're shifting their focus when it comes to TV. Comcast is reevaluating everything. N nothing firm, but it's kind of one of those things that you see, you know, that happens that makes you say, "Hmm, you know, it really does look like AT or uh, excuse me, Comcast, NB who owns NBC Universal, is reevaluating where they put their priorities. And maybe broadcast cable television is not it anymore. We'll have to wait and see. Probably far down the road before that happens. But when that does happen, this may be the moment you look back and say, hey, they sold the Weather Channel back then. Check that out. But hey, that's a little bonus story. I'll put a link to that down in the show notes. Um, but let's get into the last one that I really wanted to talk about. I saved a lot of time to talk about this story because I'm very interested in this. The AT&T Time Warner antitrust lawsuit by the DOJ is now in trial. Now, I um, I have details of this. The When I'm recording this, um, 
early uh, preliminary hearings are just getting underway. It was supposed to happen on Wednesday, but because of the, all the snow and the weather that hit there, they delayed it a little bit. But at and is in the process of buying Time Warner. Now, not Time Warner Cable. That sold the Spectrum. Everybody went already about Time Warner. I was just, Time Warner Cable? What? No. Time Warner owns MB, or, uh, CNN, TBS, TNT, um, all that kind of stuff. And Time Warner Cable on them separating a long time ago. So Time Warner Cable sold the Spectrum. Time Warner, who owns 10% of Hulu too, don't forget, is looking to sell to at and the DOJ came in and said, well, you can do that, but you need to sell off some parts of it or sell off some of your other businesses uh, to do it. We view this as an antitrust issue that you would be too big. Um, at and said, we're not selling anything. We're going to buy this. We're going to go to court on this. So there's a court case going on on this. Basically, the DOJ is asking the court to block this merger. at and is promoting it. Um, there's been a lot of debate. Is, would at and buying Time Warner be good or bad for cord cutting? Um, I think there is not enough information. No, I think a lot of it's unreasonable speculation, just to be honest with you. Could it be bad? Yeah. Could it be good? Yeah. It really comes out of how at t uses it, uh, what kind of implement safeguards are on it. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, a lot of people say, well, it's at t at t is bad. Uh, but at the same time, DirecTV now has become very popular with our, with our readers, and it seems like they've been very interested and what at t is trying to do to reach out to core cutters. So, is this good or bad? I don't think we know. I do think there is reasonable caution here. I do understand why people are very negative on it. Um, I'm gonna hold out judgment as this court case goes on. A lot of people are asking, well, what do you think, Luke? What do you think, Luke? I'm kind of watching this court case closely. I'm gonna kind of hold out judgment as I learn more about it. I wanna learn why the DOJ wants to stop it a little bit more. Um, and I want to learn why at t pushes saying it's a good idea more uh, before I make judgment. Uh, I could definitely make arguments both ways that's good or bad. It's kind of one of those things that's a 50-50. It may be good for core cards in some ways and bad for core cards in another. Not having it happen will be bad for core cards in one way and good for core cards in another. Um, I, often we try to find ways to say this is all good or this is all bad in things. And this at t Time Warner merger is kind of one of those things that's like, this, there is no one answer here, that there is good and bad. And it's kind of the story of life, that often not everything is a clear-cut black and white situation. That we, we wish often that life was black and white, that there was good, bad, and that was it. The reality is often there is gray, and while one action may have unforeseen consequences, or one action may be a lot good, a little bit bad, or one may be a lot bad, a little bit good, and it's tough because you want to have mix and match that. You just can't, and that's kind of what I'm seeing here. So I guess my caution is when you read all these stories about doom and gloom with at t Time Warner merger, take it with a grain of salt because it could be good, could be bad. We don't know enough, um, and it really could come down to being both, to be just honest with you. The at and merger is a mixed bag, as they say. So take it with a grain of salt. That's my short end of the answer. I hope that makes sense to you. I would love to know what you think. Is the at t Time Warner merger good or bad for cord cutting? Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I would love to hear your opinion on it because I'm not sold either way. And I study core cutting all day, every day. I have looked at this at t Time Warner merger in great detail. So let me know. I would really appreciate your thoughts on it. Well, hey, that's our show this week. Don't forget, if you want that um, 4K Apple TV deal from DirecTV Now, get it now. Link in the show notes before this deal comes to an end. Also, hey, we have a new app. Um, Core Cars News has a dedicated app, iOS, Android devices, and Amazon Fire devices. Check it out. It's in all three stores, and it's a really nice app. Make sure you never miss any of uh, the big stories coming out from Core Cars News. It's a fraction of the, um, the ads on the uh, desktop version, so if you're looking for a streamlined, easy one with reduced ads, I know people don't like ads. I understand that. Unfortunately, I got to pay for my child's clothes. <laughs> and gotta support my family. But check that out, that may be an option for you and an easy way to quickly find the stories and never miss a story. 
You can adjust the font size. You can have a dark mode, a white mode for the background on it. All kinds of different features there that I think you will really like. The ability to save articles for offline reading or favorite them to find them later. Um, let's say you really love a particular guide we did and the app, you can favorite that guide and never uh, lose it again. You can come back to it in the future. Maybe it's our channel guide. Maybe it's our how to set up an antenna. Maybe it's our um, ways to avoid going over your data cap guide. So check that out. Well, that's it. I'll see you next week. Please subscribe. Please give us a thumbs up. They help us greatly. The more people who interact with these videos, the more people YouTube shows it to. So thank you. I appreciate support. Can't do this without you. I'll see you next week.